What's going on everybody? Welcome to part seven of our Python for Finance tutorial series. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is just kind of building on the last one. So in the last video, we pulled all of the data from Yahoo, saved it. I've gone ahead and commented this out just so I don't forget and rerun that again. But by now, in the same directory as the script we've been working on, you should have stock DF's uh, directory there. And then within it, a little over 500 companies and all of their pricing information. We can just click on one just for an example. There you have it. So now we have all the company information that we need. And what we want to do from this point is combine them all together. Now, I wanted to say we could do we could have done this all in one go. So as we pulled them, rather than saving them, we could have added them, joined them to a main data frame. Uh, but what I'd like to do generally is save everything in uh, everything that I can when I'm pulling from a, 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 any sort of API or data set or anything like that. I like to save it locally because it took like, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe even more to pull all that data as opposed to just when you do it locally, you can pull it within moments. Um, so anyways, what we're going to do now is actually bring those together. But in the future, it's conceivable that you know, maybe you want to also, besides just have the close price, which is what we're going to look at, uh, maybe you also want to have the high minus the low or something like that. Um, and to account for all of those things, you would either, if you did it live, you'd have to go back and repull all the data again, which is kind of lame. So anyways, that's why we're doing it this way. I just figure eventually someone, was, someone will ask, why didn't we just do this to, in the beginning? So now that we have all of these data frames together, uh, what we want to do is compile them all into one one data frame and obviously they have a lot of overlapping columns you've got open high low close volume and adjusted close but what I'd like to do is take the adjusted close column for all stocks and combine them into one large data frame of you know a little over 500 columns so uh, to start we're going to come up with a new function here and we're going to call this function compile data so compile data and then what we're going to do is with open um, sp500 tickers.pickle with the intention to read bytes as f we're going to say tickers equals pickle dot load f and now we're ready to be actually begin our data frame so we're going to say um, main underscore df and right now it's just going to be a empty pd dot data frame so it's just a a data frame object, but it has like no columns, no index, nothing. Now what we're going to do is begin iterating through um, basically the tickers that we have. We could also iterate through all of the files that's in this directory, but if we do that, um, we might have old files from before or something like that. I think it's just best to go this way, go with the latest updated tickers file. Um, that seems to make the most sense. So we're going to do we're going to do that. So what we're going to say now is for count ticker in enumerate tickers. What enumerate does is just lets us kind of count things. So it's kind of the equivalent of counting through range len of something. So um, basically what it's going to do is in, when you enumerate some sort of iterable, it just, it, it will return, you know, zero and then the zeroth element one and then the firstth element and so on. So we can count where we are in this list and it's just kind of helpful so we know where we are in the whole processing process. So for each of those, we're going to say the data frame right now is pd.read underscore CSV. And it's going to be a CSV in stock DFs slash whatever that ticker is dot CSV. So then dot format ticker. Now we're going to say df.set index. We're going to set the index to be date. We're going to say, um, yeah, we had, I was I was trying to think, I was like, hmm, do we actually even need to do this? But yes, we do. <laughs> so we set as date, in place will be equal to true again, so we don't have to just redefine, we can do it all in one place. Now we're gonna do df.rename, and we're gonna rename some columns, in this case, just one, uh, columns equals, and we're gonna rename the adjusted close column to be whatever the ticker name is. So now the column will be, you know, XOM, AAPL or whatever, and that column is just gonna be the ticker price or the close for that ticker. So it's just one column at this point. 
um, that we're interested in, and eventually we will make it just one column. And then we'll say in place equals true again. Now what we're going to do is df.drop, and we're going to go ahead and drop five columns. Open, high, low, close, and volume. So the only thing remaining is what used to be adjusted close is now ticker. We drop on the axes one. I don't, Someone can explain why axes is useful, because to me, every time you drop, you are always dropping on the first axes, and yet, if you don't have this, the default is axis zero, and you will get an error. It's very annoying. Anyway, in place equals true. Make sure it's not running over my face. It's not. So those are the columns. Now what we want to do is basically start joining all of these data frames together, because each of these data frames now is just the adjusted close price called by their ticker name. So to start, our data frame is actually empty, so we can't easily join to it because it, it would it's not they're not compatible. So what we're going to say now is if main df dot empty, this will just be either true or false. It's a boolean. So if it is empty, then we're going to say main df equals df. Boom. Now it's not empty, but if it isn't empty, i.e. it already has a df or multiple dfs, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say main df equals main df dot join df how outer. Uh, basically, this just lets us keep both, like if there's certain column or certain rows that some don't have or whatever, it will kind of, it'll let us have uh, information from both, which will wind up giving us not a numbers sometimes when there's not some overlap. But this way we actually don't lose data for anybody. Now, uh, once we've done that, we're going to do if count modulo, oops, that's not modulo, count modulo 10 equals zero. Um, then we'll go ahead and print count. What's this doing for us? Basically, when you do something modulo a number, basically you're saying if we were to divide count by 10, wherever we are, is the remainder zero. So count let's say divided by 10, if the remainder is zero, then we're gonna print the count. So we're gonna see um, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So we just, that way we know where we are sort of along the way, but we're not printing out every single, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all that. So once we're done, um, we're done with that for loop, and we're just going to, let's just print um, main df dot head, and then let's also go ahead and save this. So we're gonna say main df dot two underscore CSV we we'll call this CSV SP500 joined closes dot CSV. And we're done. So now let's actually just call this function to run. Copy, paste, and let's run it and see if we get any errors. And we do. Um, this is a weird looking error. It's unclear to me why we're getting, so in line 71, it's in the renames. Ah, I see what we've done. Okay. So uh, it's like a dictionary. So you we're renaming this column, and then we're going to say to what? So it should be a colon rather than a comma there. <laughs> That's a really unhelpful error, by the way, pandas. <laughs> or maybe I'm just too stupid to read that error. But yeah, that was unclear. Okay, so we're running through. We're about halfway done at this point. Um, I think I'll just keep recording until it's done. Uh, we should be done pretty quick. I just want to see the, the actual data frame head before I, uh, before I sign off, make sure we got everything we intended. Sure enough, yep, we got it. And as you can see, some of these companies have not a numbers. That's just because like, uh, not all of them had ticker or were even trading back in the year 2000. So if we said main DF dot tail, um, chances are these would be filled in. Um, but I can't do that because this wasn't a function. And it's currently unreachable via the interactive line here. Okay, so we have that. We should actually have a new, um, yes, this new file here with all the joined closes. It's about 20 megabytes. Uh, so now we have all of our data in just like one big CSV that we can begin to work with. So in the next tutorial, we'll actually begin working with all of that data. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, problems, issues, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.